gentlemen, I appreciate your attendance here tonight uh, at this lecture organised by Adelaide Society. It is a great honour on my part to introduce the guest speaker who has served in the Muslim community as an Imam and lecturer since 1998 and graduated from Qom. He has, he has translated over 15 books and written a few books as well and has travelled around the world lecturing in Europe, Asia, North America and Africa. He has taught at the Islamic Studies Centre in London for over five years and served in various Islamic centres. Presently he is the Director of Relig and, and Religious Leader of the Ahlul Bayt Islamic Centre. Sayyid Ali is the Founder and Director of the Saviour Foundation and is also on the Board of Directors for Hidayat TV. He is also in the management committee of Lambeth and Stock Women's Faith Forum. Please give him a nice hand. <laughs> um, um, basically, we've provided the feedback forms uh, for you, and we really appreciate that you take the time to give us feedback and we base our. If you if you want any um, topics to be uh, referred to in the next events as well. Put them down. Uh, we really appreciate that. And refreshments are available outside. And after the program, if you want to take any leaflets with you, there are some information provided by the society as well. Thank you very much. The whole Quran has 114 chapters and one of the chapters is called the women and in that it does not just talk about women, it just generally gives rulings on inheritance and many other uh, matters concerning general genders in Islam. The whole Quran when generally talking about Muslims, it addresses all oh, you who believe, it does not say men or women, it says all oh, you uh, all the ones who believe in Islam. So men and women are included. Islam came in a time when women were deprived of their basic rights and daughters were buried alive by many of the people in Mecca. And they did not inherit, they could not give a witness in the court. Uh, no social or um, legal position was ever given to the women in the, in the Arabian Peninsula. In that time, the Holy Prophet came, Muhammad peace be upon him, came and he gave inheritance to women and he said that they can socially take part in not only um, most of the issues but also politically they can be active, they can have their own business, they can um, give witness in the court and the rights started coming in. In a time when the Holy Prophet was giving rights to women, there were objections from the, the Arabian, the pagan Arabs at the time, and there were also objections from many of the, the tribes, the tribal Muslims or the people who were converting to Islam, the tribal Arabian people. So in that time, Islam came, came in and the Holy Prophet declared the first thing that burying your daughters alive is forbidden and anyone who does it will be held responsible before the day, uh, on the day of judgment before Allah. And the verses in the Holy Quran came there are verses in Surah Takfir in uh, Surah number 82, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 82 or 84, I'm doubting at the moment. In that chapter, the verses came and they talked about uh, the burial of the daughters and the, the Holy Quran said that when the day of judgment comes, it will be asked from all those men who buried their daughters alive, for what crime were these daughters buried? Uh, in, the, in, the, in the graves. And when a person came to the Holy Prophet and said, uh, O Messenger of Allah, my sins are so great that they cannot be forgiven. He said, Allah forgives all sins. He said, no, but my sins are very great. He said, um, just repent to Allah. So that person started crying and he said that I had uh, buried my daughter alive. My wife, when she gave birth to her daughter, she did not tell me. Her daughter, her sister also had given birth and she had a 
I had a son, so my wife exchanged. And later, when I found out that that was my daughter, even though she had grown up, I even then, but it had the Holy Prophet cried so loudly and he had tears that his beard was, you know, um, they say that the, the hair in his body was standing and he was screaming and he said, get up and leave because I do not wish to see the punishment come down onto you and it also takes me. That was a time when the Holy Prophet was giving rights and he said, if you have a son in the house, then it, he is a blessing and a daughter is a mercy. So the two terms used in Arabic, the son is a ni'mat, which is a blessing or a bounty, and a daughter is mercy, rahmah. Now mercy is greater than, than bounty in Arabic. Uh, and the Holy Prophet himself has been declared as a mercy for the universe. The Holy Quran in Surah number 21, it says that the Holy Prophet, we have not sent you but a mercy for the universe. So the Holy Prophet himself has been declared as a mercy for the universe. And he says that every daughter for her father is a mercy. <clears throat> In a time when women were given into marriage without their consent, he said, without the consent, the marriage does not take place. It is the consent of two sides. Marriage is a contract in Islam. In Arabic it is called an aq, which is a contract. Uh, a contract does not take place without the consent of two parties. For example, uh, in Islamic contract, there is a whole detail, there are many detailed chapters. A person says that I am buying this, this Allah, for example, from me, and I do not wish to agree. They cannot just take it and say, okay, this is the money and I am taking it. I have to agree, so the two parties have to agree. Uh, the Holy Prophet declared wedding to be a contract. When the two parties are not agreeing on this contract, the, the, the contract does not go ahead. So if you look at the Islamic marriage contract, it is basically a legal binding. Uh, I do not wish to go into it, I do not wish to make it sound um, uh, uh, an emotional and a, a sensational attraction. And, um, it is, but it is more that Islam gives responsibility to both sides rather than just saying that the women are given into marriage. So Islam came and the Holy Prophet gave the consent to, to both parties and he said that the daughters also have a right and the women also have a right to decline the proposal given to them. Then it also gives the honor and respect that you also have, you have it in the West and many times you don't realize or, um, that it is not a general practice, that it is men who would propose for women and women do not propose to give honor and respect to, uh, to the women. So a man proposes and the women can decline. That was again something that was introduced by the Holy Prophet of Islam. There were other things that the Holy Prophet introduced. He said, the heavens, the heaven is under the feet of your mother. He may gave mothers more rights over fathers. He said, it is your mothers who have more right over the child. So therefore he said that your, you know, your heaven is under the feet of your mother, not your father, but your mother. And then when asked by one of the, the followers, he said, O Messenger of Allah, who has the most right over all the blessings that I have? Who deserves those blessings that when I have to give back? He said, your mother. He said, then, he said, your mother. He said, after her, he said, it's your mother. He said, then, he said, then it's your father. So three times the mother and then at the fourth stage is the, the father. So that was the, uh, the percentage he was describing how much a mother goes through. And he declared that the jihad of a woman, the struggle, jihad literally translates into English, strive or struggle. He said the jihad of a woman uh, is that when she gives a child birth, when she goes through those pains, then she, all of her sins are forgiven. Just for man, there is martyrdom and all of his sins are forgiven. The martyrdom and the, uh, for a woman would be that if she died in a, in a childbirth or if she went through that trouble, all of her sins are forgiven. Uh, and in that society, the Holy Prophet was giving rights when uh, talking about uh, you know, the rights of women in Islam or rights of women in the, in the world was, was a new phenomenon. 